O give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. I'm Jim Gary, an honorary associate at the Church of the Ascension in London, Ontario, Canada, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to evening prayer this evening on this Tuesday, the 2nd of March. We are in the week of the second Sunday in Lent, and the church is set aside today as the commemoration of Chad, who was Bishop of Litchfield and a missionary, and who died on this date in the year 672. We'll be speaking more about St. Chad in our meditation a little later. Today, meanwhile, is Banana Cream Pie Day, and I guess just because it is. Uh, it's one of my favorite pies, and just the, the thought of it uh, brings happy, uh, happy feelings to me. Today is Dr. Seuss Day. On this day in 1904, Theodore Seuss Geisel, better known as Dr. Seuss, even though he did not have a doctor's degree, was born. He has written 46 books for children and is a well-known author, cartoonist, and poet. He won the Pulitzer Prize in 1984. He passed away in 1991. Interestingly, just this morning, it was announced on the news that his publishers have stopped press runs on six of his books until illustrations in those books that depict certain racial stereotypes can be eliminated or updated. Looking back in history on this day, in the year 1872, the political and spiritual leader of the Métis people of the Canadian prairies, Louis Riel, went into voluntary exile in St. Paul, Minnesota. Uh, Louis Riel died in 1885, only eight months after returning to Canada, executed by hanging after having been charged with treason. He is buried near the cathedral in St. Boniface, Manitoba. A very small marker there, but a place of uh, many people care to visit. We've been there several times, and uh, it's worth thinking of his place in Canadian history and the ways in which the Métis people of Canada have, uh, have been ignored or given improper care, uh, not given the rights to which they should be qualified. Barbara McCallum Hanley, Canada's first female, female mayor, was born on this date in 1882 in Magnetowan, Ontario. She served as the mayor of Webwood, Ontario from 1936 to 1944. As I said, the first female mayor in Canada. Uh, Webwood, uh, for the geographically challenged, is between Espanola and Massey on Highway 17. Uh, in Northern Ontario. Uh, Barbara McCallum Henley died in 1959. Also on this, uh, this date in the same year, 1882, Queen Victoria nearly escaped assassination when a man shot her as she was aboarding, boarding a train in Windsor, that's Windsor, England. In 1930, English poet and writer D.H. Lawrence died of tuberculosis on this date at the age of 44. And in 1935, the Warner Brothers cartoon character Porky Pig was, so to sp speak, born. He debuted uh, in the cartoon, I Haven't Got a Hat. And finally, on this date, uh, two blockbuster movies were, uh, were released. In 1953, King Kong, starring Fay Ray, and in 1965, The Sound of Music, starring Julie Andrews and Christopher Plummer. I think that uh, is enough of our history. I should have really saved Porky Pig for the last, so I could have said, that's all, folks. But now it is time for us to say our evening prayer. O oh Lord, I call to you, come to me quickly. Hear my voice when I cry to you. Let my prayer be set forth in your sight as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Behold now, bless the Lord, all you servants of the Lord, you that stand by night in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands in the holy places and bless the Lord. The Lord who made heaven and earth bless you. 
out of Zion. Our psalm tonight will be Psalm 89, a fairly long psalm, and we will just be reading the first 18 verses. Your love, O Lord, forever will I sing. From age to age my mouth will proclaim your faithfulness. For I am persuaded that your love is established forever. You set your faithfulness firmly in the heavens. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn an oath to David, my servant. I will establish your line forever and preserve your throne for all generations. The heavens bear witness to your wonders, O Lord, and your faithfulness in the assembly of the holy ones. For who in the skies can be compared to the Lord, who is like the Lord among the gods? God is much to be feared in the council of the holy ones, great and terrible to all those round about him. Who is like you, Lord God of hosts? O mighty Lord, your faithfulness is all around you. You rule the raging of the sea and still the surging of its waves. You have crushed Rahab, Rahab of the deep with a deadly wound. You have scattered your enemies with your mighty arm. Yours are the heavens, the earth also is yours. You laid the foundations of the world and all that is in it. You've made the north and the south. Tabor and Hermon rejoice in your name. You have a mighty arm, strong as your hand, and high is your right, arm, right hand. Righteousness and justice are the foundations of your throne. Love and justice go before your face. Happy are the people who know the festal shout. They walk, O Lord, in the light of your presence. They rejoice daily in your name. They are jubilant in your righteousness. For you are the glory of their strength, and by your favor our might is exalted. Truly the Lord is our ruler, the Holy One of Israel is our King. And our psalm prayer. Remember us, gracious God, whom we cannot see your way and purpose, and renew in us the joy of your kingdom of light and life. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We turn now to our scripture. We continue our reading in the sixth chapter, this very long chapter of the Gospel of John. And we pick up where we left off yesterday, beginning at verse 52. The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as a living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread which came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate, and they died. But the one who eats this bread will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. I cannot read these words without thinking very strongly of the Eucharist, that meal in which, by sacred mysteries, which we cannot fully understand, the true body and the true blood of our Lord Jesus Christ are given to us under the gifts of bread and wine. The church calls this the real presence, and within the church there is some discussion as to whether this is a spiritual presence or a corporal presence, but it is a real presence. Jesus said he was giving us his body and he was giving us his blood. Uh, those who heard him uh, preaching and teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum, that town which had become his headquarters on the north shore of the Sea of Galilee, had great misunderstanding about it. And some of the Judeans that were there 
uh, because this was up in Galilee, we are wondering if these are the same Judeans who uh, were the scribes and Pharisees who were coming up to spy on him, to just see him in some way or another, uh, make a misstep, say something that was wrong. And they seem to think that he was talking about cannibalism. Sadly, uh, a criticism made of those churches, which accept the concept of the real presence in the sacrament uh, of Eucharist, that is that we are receiving our Lord's body and blood uh, with the bread and the wine in ways that are a sacred mystery, have accused us of cannibalism. And I would say nothing can be farther than the truth. But Jesus is telling us, he is giving us his real body and his real blood, that this was not like the bread which they received, the uh, the Israelites, as they were traveling through the wilderness with Moses, uh, that manna from heaven, manna being a, a simple Hebrew word name, what is that? Uh, this was ever so much more than this. Uh, Jesus was speaking in metaphor, but metaphor said so many times over that he was saying much more than that. Jesus is calling for us to make an act of faith. Faith that somehow, in that bread and wine, we also are receiving him. That we take him into ourself. And that as we receive him, we are strengthened by him. He is within us, and we are within him. He spoke those words elsewhere. And this wonderful reception of our Lord Jesus Christ in the Eucharist is our food for the journey. Our spiritual food as we make our way through life. Faith in Jesus is not compared with just tasting or admiring, but with eating. Jesus says that we must have him within us, and we must partake of him. Seeing a loaf of bread on a plate will not satisfy our hunger. Knowing the ingredients that are in that bread will not satisfy our lumber, our hunger, and I admit to being a regular ingredients label reader, wanting to know what it is that I am having. And the best bread is of some of the simplest ingredients. But just knowing the ingredients of the bread will not satisfy our hunger. Taking pictures of the bread will not satisfy our hunger. And I'm known as a person that does like to take pictures of my food because I like to remember the meal I've had. But the pictures alone will not satisfy my hunger. Telling people about the bread will not satisfy our hunger. Selling the bread will not satisfy our hunger. Playing catch with the bread will not satisfy our hunger. Nothing will satisfy our hunger and bring us life except actually eating the bread. The one who eats this bread that Jesus Christ gives of himself, this true bread from heaven, the one who, who receives his body and his blood is receiving the true bread of heaven and will live forever. These are words of promise that Jesus gives us in our gospel for this day. Words I believe in, words I live by, which makes the present Eucharistic fast difficult but bearable because we think of those who have been imprisoned by their faith, for their faith, I should say, who have not had chance also to receive this meal. But even the memory of the meal, the thought of the meal, is strengthening for me, for I know that I have received it. And when the opportunity presents itself, I receive it often. For Jesus said, as often as you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you remember my death until I come again. And so today, in this time of absence and separation, we remember this holy meal in which our Lord Jesus Christ does truly give of himself in mysterious ways, this great mystery of faith that in believing we receive, and in receiving our Lord Jesus Christ, we grow in faith as he becomes part of us and we become part of him. Now, as we said at the outset, today is a day that the church commemorates Chad 
the bishop and missionary. Chad, who died on this date, the 2nd of March, in 672, was a prominent 7th century Anglo-Saxon churchman who became abbot of several monasteries, the bishop of the North Umbrians, and subsequently bishop of the Mercians and the Lindsay people. He was later canonized as a saint. He was a brother of Chad, who also became a saint. Uh, Chad features strongly in the work of the Venerable Bede, as he is credited together with Chad with introducing Christianity to the Mercian kingdom. With his bishopric based in Litchfield, Chad crisscrossed his new diocese on foot so that he might speak of the gospel with anyone he met on the way and meet with his people at eye level as Christ had done as he walked the pathways of Galilee. The area that Chad covered was very large, stretching across England from coast to coast. It was also in many places difficult terrain with woodland, heath, and mountain over much of the center and large areas of marshland to the east. I have ridden on trains across the breadth, breadth of England and it's a very twisty and a very curvy route, uh, which helps us to understand a bit of the terrain that became ever so familiar to Chad as he walked among the people uh, of his bishopric. The Venerable Bede gives us much detail as to Chad's death. A man named Owen, who worked closely with Chad, was working outside the oratory while Chad was studying alone, and the other brothers were inside the oratory at prayer. Owen heard the most amazing sound of joyful singing from heaven coming closer and closer until it seemed to rest within the oratory itself. The singing then stopped for about a half an hour and then resumed going back heavenward. Later, Chad called Owen and his, uh, the other brothers to his study and explained that the angels had come to him to call him to his heavenly reward and that seven days later they would come to fetch him. And so it was that Chad, over the period of the next week, weakened and died. And on the 2nd of March, which remains his feast day, he allowed the angels to carry him home. The Venerable Bede writes that Chad had always looked forward to this day, or rather, in his mind, it had always been on the day of the Lord. Chad certainly walked the way with our Lord Jesus. Chad had certainly allowed himself to become of the Lord, become a part of the Lord, and the Lord to become a part of himself. And so on this day, when we hear Jesus' words about his true body and blood, and about receiving his body and blood, and about how in doing so we have the gift of eternal life, we give thanks for St. Chad as we remember his death this day, and how in great joy he went to his heavenly reward. And now let us turn to our prayers. And first, the prayer of this day for St. Chad. Almighty God, you gave to your servant Chad both humility in the office of bishop and patience in the pursuit of unity and peace. And so you confirmed his calling to manifest among the English the gracious rule of Christ. Give to all your people a true sense of their worth and the simplicity of heart to seek your glory and so advance the cause of Christ. For his sake, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And the prayer of this week. Almighty God, whose Son was revealed in majesty before he suffered death upon the cross, give us grace to perceive his glory, that being strengthened by his grace, we may be changed into his likeness from glory to glory, through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now, prayers for the evening. Most holy God, the source of all good desires, all right judgments, and all just works, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, 
so that our minds may be fixed on doing your will, and that freed from the fear of our enemies, we may pass our time in rest and quietness through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Be present, O merciful God, and protect us through the hours of this night, so that we who are weary by the changes and chances of this life may rest in your eternal changelessness, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, in whom we live and move and have our being, guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Creator of the universe, the light of your glory shines in the darkness of our lives. Make us attentive to your presence, prompt to serve you, and ever eager to follow you in the steps of the one who is the true light, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now I would offer you this moment of silence to bring your prayers and concerns to this time of prayer. And now, as our Savior has taught us, each in our own language, we say the better words. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go now in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.